asking about it. But the main point of it is CrossFit's an excellent uh, program. We believe in it wholeheartedly. Um, but you can't do have an exercise program and not have a good nutrition program. Okay, so we want to try to give that to you guys and offer what we believe in. Um, CrossFit prescribes to a paleo or a zone. Doesn't mean that every other diet isn't, doesn't work. Um, I know that somebody's tried the, what is it, the okay. Whole30. I'm not knocking it, I just prefer, for me, paleo and zones work really well for me. So that's what I go with. Doesn't mean that every other diet is bad. Okay, so I'm not trying to knock that or say that this is good, but this is what we prescribe to. So, on the CrossFit Triangle for Success, this is what CrossFit says. Nutrition, metabolic conditioning, gymnastics, weightlifting, and sport. Okay? Nutrition's on the bottom. That's our foundation. So without nutrition or good nutrition, you can't really be successful. That doesn't mean that, obviously, we have some gains, we hit PRs. But if you really want to take this seriously and see the most success, you got to have your nutrition dialed in. Okay? So that's why it's on the bottom, and that's the most important key component. And I think that's why we wanted to have this, this nutrition and talk to you guys a little bit about it so we can get you kind of on that path to success. I'm sure every one of you here has said at some point that they went out to eat the night before and came in the next day, and their workout was just trash. You just know you could have done better. You know you could have gave it more, but there was nothing in the tank because whatever you ate, was um, not sitting right with you or didn't fuel you for that workout. And we all know it, we just don't always think about it. And Andy actually just mentioned this, I'm gonna to speak to him because he's hiding over in the corner. He just finished the workout, 16.4 from uh, everybody you guys did yesterday. And he said, that's it, I'm getting back on nutrition because I've been eating like crap this week and I've been drinking soda and that workout felt horrible. So, um, he still did better than the first time, but he said he felt like crap. Is there any questions over to this part? No? Okay. No, sir. <laughs> so I have this a lot. Like people ask me, what is, what is paleo? And paleo is pretty simple. It just goes back to like the caveman times. Think about it that way, okay? So everything that's sold in the grocery store that's in a box that has a label on it generally is not paleo. So when we say you go in the grocery store, we say stay to the outside, go to the, um, the produce section, the meat section, and then maybe the dairy, there's some good dairy in there, uh, not really cheeses and all that, but you can get like coconut milk and almond milk. We're gonna talk a little bit about that too with the food labels and some of the other stuff here towards the end, okay? Uh, but really, CrossFit says, and so does paleo, lean meats and vegetables, okay? Nuts and seeds, some fruit, little starch, and no sugar, no sugar at all. So we're, when we talk sugar, though, we're talking about refined sugar, and okay, not like natural sugars. Natural sugar would be honey. Um, there's some other guava nectar. Just naturally in fruits. Yeah, naturally in, in fruits. So if it's processed in a, um, a factory, that's what we want to try to avoid. And some of you guys may not know this, but there's 56 different names on a food label that, that um, companies will hide the sugar name on the label. So you may not think that there's sugar in there, but there is, based on the 56 different names that they can use. And some of it doesn't mean that those are bad. Some of those, um, even when you're talking about fruits and vegetables, if you actually get down to like the core like, name for that, it, come, it sounds weird, but it's a natural sugar or a natural sweetener. It's not something that's bad. And trying to distinguish between things that are natural and not added is a little bit hard sometimes. Um, and it, it takes some time to kind of remember what's good and what's bad. I mean, there's even times that I go and I'll be looking at something and I'll look at the label and I'm like, ah, I can't remember if that's a, that's one that's okay or if that's a modified manufactured one. And I'll just Google it and try to see what comes up. Um, see if it gives me a little bit better idea so I can remember. Okay, no questions on Haley. Paleo is probably the easiest way if you just wanted to try to try something. Generally, just stick with that right there. Anything that's grown from the ground, anything you harvest back in the day, is good to eat. That's pretty much what they're saying. Um, sticking to the outside of the grocery store is the easiest way to do that. That's generally what I do. Um, what I do a combination, and I'm actually going to get back on this, but it's uh, paleo and zone combined. And I'm going to get back on this myself. 
this is where I saw the greatest success. I felt really good. I had a lot of energy when I was working out, um, and I feel like I had some pretty good gains. Not that I'm still not, but I just don't feel as dialed in. So they talk about dialing in the zone. The Western diet, the American diet, consists of generally we're eating about 60 to 70 percent carbs in our daily diet by in a single serving. So the the, the uh, percentages are going to be higher in the carb. Okay, so like the Western diet says that fat is bad and fat's what makes us fat. Have you heard that? Everybody? <laughs> okay, because if we attribute the obesity to all the other causes, high blood sugar, heart attack, all that, everybody says, well, it's fat. So fat would be bad, that's the problem. That isn't the problem. Fat is actually good for us, and we're going to talk about different types of good fats and why that's not the problem. The problem is actually carbs. So if you go to the store and you're going to try to eat something healthy that you think is healthy, the label says low fat, and you look on there, there's no fat in it. Calories are under control, but then it's loaded with carbs. And sugar, we're going to go back to this, sugar is the only uh, ingredient on a food label that doesn't have to have a percentage on the label. If anybody knew that, sugar is pretty much the enemy. They pay people under the table. <laughs> and CrossFit actually try to fight for the, the sugar and soda industry. I'm sure you've seen some of those things come out. Um, so again, okay, so our carb level that we would eat in the typical diet is about 60 to 70 percent, which puts our, um, what, what's the word I'm looking for? <laughs> I'm not sure. The problem is, is when you eat that many carbs, you can only use so much. You're going to work out, your brain's going to eat up a bunch of it to function, and the rest of it, it stores away and turns it into fat. So it doesn't matter how much fat is not in there because if you have too much um, carbs in that meal that you're eating, it's just going to turn to fat anyway. So that's kind of like a long route to it, but that's what happens. And the problem is, is once it turns into fat, you can burn it as energy, but it's not the same thing as carbs. It doesn't get utilized by your body the same way anymore. So you can't turn it back into a carb. That's, that's a simple way. I didn't want to get too like, technical with it because it confuses a lot of people. So it does. Try to figure out how to break it down a little bit. Um, so that's the easy way of saying it, okay? So if we eat in this proportion, what Dr. Sears, who's the guy who invented um, the zone diet, says that you can get your insulin levels under control and basically um, all the chemical processes that go in the, in the body when we eat, uh, we can control that. So I have it down here in this little note. The liver is what produces insulin. It can only hold about 60 to 70 grams of carbs. Once we eat a carb, whether it doesn't matter what it is, we'll talk about um, high glycemic stuff here in a second. But any carb, be a fruit, vegetable, okay, think of those as carbs. As soon as we eat it, our body turns it into sugar. Okay, it breaks it down. So the liver can use it three ways. It breaks it down into energy, like she said. It uses it for the brain, because the brain functions off the of sugar. Um, and then it also can store it as fat. So when this liver fills up, it can only hold so much in a day, or in a couple hours actually, um, it overflows. Think of it as a cup, you can only hold so much, it overflows, where does it go? Your body can't really do much with that, so it stores it as fat. So when we have a diet that's really high in carbs, that cup constantly overflowing and it's just being stored as fat. So you can sit there and say, hey, I'm trying to eat healthy, I'm eating low fat food, it's loaded with carbs, and I'm still gaining weight, what's the problem? That's the problem. Does that make sense? The zone says 40 carbs, 40% in a carb, 30% protein, and 30% fat. Okay? And it breaks it down into blocks. There's a calculation. I have a sheet over here. And if anybody wants to go through this later, I will go through this with you. You can figure out your block. Um, and it basically says, let's break down your activity level, your lean body mass, time your activity level, and we're going to figure out your blocks for a day. I think when I was eating, I was about 18 blocks in a day. And one block would consist of 9 grams of carbs, 7 grams of protein, and 1.5 grams of fat. Okay? And that's just a rough calculation. It does factor in that, like if you ate chicken, a one ounce thing of chicken, yes, there will be fat in that. Or if you ate ground beef, there's going to be fat in that. That's why the, the fat's a little lower, because it factors all that into each portion. Okay? <clears throat> So when you put your plate together, you would basically pick, let's say, if you're going to eat a three-block meal, 
you're going to take one block, so that would consist of the 9 grams of carbs, 7 grams of protein, and 0.5 grams of fat. And I have some sheets over here to help you guys figure this out, and I'll explain that to you when we're done. But it's, you basically would assemble your plate with, let's say, 3 grams of, or 3 blocks of protein. So that would be 3 ounces of chicken. Okay, we'll just go ahead and make these. There's my protein. Now I'm going to uh, do 3 grams of carbs, or 3 blocks of carbs. Um, and that would be, I could do an apple, would consist of two blocks, and then maybe like a green pepper, okay? There would be my three, gram, my three blocks. And then for fat, nuts and seeds, real easy. So like a, is that, it's like a handful. What this, the only problem with zone is you do have to weigh and measure out your food. So you do have to get a digital scale, and you do need a bunch of little different measuring cups. It gets a little tedious, it takes, I would say it took us. It takes about three to four days to really start understanding it, and then you really don't need the cups it, anymore. It took me like a week or two. I'm not gonna lie. I'm not as good at it as he is, and I didn't even want to do it at first because it was a lot of math, and we all know how much I love math. Um, but it does. It does become doable, and it becomes very easy. Has anybody ever done like Atkins or Weight Watchers or anything where you got points for a day? Think of it the same way. He got four. Um, I got 14 points for the day. And every time I made a meal, I got, that, you know, if I did a one block meal, that was one point. I got 14 points throughout the day. Do the same thing with Weight Watchers and all of those different um, things that you do. And after a little bit of time, it becomes easy um, because you start being able to visualize what those portion sizes are. And when we eat, one of the biggest things um, that he hasn't mentioned yet, when you eat all that food together at the same time, you're satisfying all the different parts of your body that you need. Your brain's getting carbs and it's getting energized. Your body's getting fat for um, energy. And also fat um, is how you absorb nutrients. And that's what transports nutrients in your body. So now your cells are getting all the things that they need. And then protein is obviously helping with your muscles, cell growth, all of that stuff. So when you put it all together, your body's able to process it at the same time. If I just went and ate my 40% of carbs and didn't eat anything else, I'm gonna still be hungry. Because my body's like, you missed two things there. If I eat carbs and protein, your body's like, you still miss something, I'm still hungry. And that's why people tend to snack throughout the day. Because you're only snacking on generally one or two of those, and you're missing something. And so you constantly feel hungry. Right, so to touch on that, when we eat, to get your, um, the chemical process in alignment in your body, you gotta think of this as eating in conjunction. So when you eat your snack, you have to have a protein, a carb, and a snack. So you have to eat that together. Huh? You said snack, fat. Oh, I'm sorry, is it fat? <laughs> As your snack, you need to have whatever block, you have to have the proper proportions. Okay, so if let's say I just ate just my carb and walked away, and let's say an hour or two later I ate my protein, I'm not really eating in the proper zone. I'm not getting the proper benefit of the chemical process that goes into my in the body when we eat in these proportions. Okay, so we're gonna I'm gonna kind of turn it over to her, and then I'm gonna once she's done, I'm gonna break down um, how I would figure out my day for eating and how many blocks and stuff like that. Okay, so I'll turn it over to her to finish off what she wants to talk about. So move over to the left. Wait, camera. Thank you. <laughs> so one of the biggest things, like I said, you have to eat those things together so that your body feels full and it gets everything that it needs to. One of the things that I brought for you guys to try today is um, just like a homemade chicken salad. It's super easy. I can tell you how to use different things to make it because um, some of us have dairy allergies or other allergies. Um, and it depends on how strict with the paleo you want to go. The thing about zone is zone is not paleo. It doesn't have to be. Just know that if you go and eat like a made chicken, that's like six, seven blocks of food for the day. You're kind of screwed. If you eat paleo, you're going to get more food for all the day. Because the problem with American culture is our food is very calorie dense with very little nutrients. Which means you get a lot of fat, a lot of um, unwanted stuff that gets stored, and your body says you're still hungry because we didn't get those nutrients. <coughs> we want to start going more paleo so that we can eat nutrient dense food, you get more food, less calories, lose weight. Does that make sense? Okay. So my chicken salad. My chicken is my protein. I use, there's different things you can use. Um, I used mayonnaise this time, like a paleo mayonnaise, um, is my fat. And then I have grapes and celery in there, and that's my carbs. 
you can easily make that so that it's super easy. You can portion it out. Like if you had pre-made like chicken and then your grapes and celery and then mayonnaise on the side, you just take what you need to build your block. You can make that a one block, two block, all the way to a five block meal, um, depending on how much of each one you put in, right? Um, so, like I said before, 